Now that you have your medical degree, you decide to hang a shingle in front of your home and begin your practice. When a slight breeze blows, the shingle starts swinging with a small amplitude. If you'll look carefully, the figure in this problem is exactly the same as one of the problems that we previously did, which was an equilibrium problem. However, the questions that are asked here are not about equilibrium. A, what is the period of motion of this shingle? B, if the maximum angle of the shingle is 0.01 radians, what is its maximum angular acceleration alpha? And C, what is the angular velocity when the angle of the shingle is 0.005 radians? All of the questions in this problem are about simple harmonic motion. So despite the fact that the figure looks awfully familiar, we need to recognize that this is a simple harmonic motion problem. In this case, the simple harmonic motion itself is a swinging pendulum. However, all simple harmonic motion is governed by the same set of equations. Since the object in question is swinging like a pendulum, we'll not denote either the x or the y as being a sinusoidal function, but instead we'll note that the theta of the sine at any moment is given by a sine or cosine function. I'll choose cosine. This formula will be used to note the angle of the shingle at any moment in time, and if we take two derivatives, we'll very quickly have the expressions for the angular velocity and the angular acceleration as follows. If we look closely at this set of equations, we'll notice that there's something that's actually very confusing about how they're formulated. Because we have angular motion rather than x, v, and a to denote position, velocity, and acceleration, we've used theta, omega, and alpha. However, there is an omega on the right-hand side of the equal sign, which is related to the period and frequency, as always, such that the omega is a unit conversion, telling us that 2 pi radians is a full cycle, as is tau seconds, where tau is the period, which gives us the same thing as 2 pi times frequency. This is one of the two omegas, and is the one found exclusively on the right-hand side of all equal signs. However, there is another omega. It is also in radians per second, but it is an angular velocity rather than an angular frequency. And so to make our notation clear, we're going to put a subscript on the omega to the left of the equation. The subscript will be a little lowercase v, which indicates that this omega represents the velocity with which the object is moving rather than the frequency. The three relations given here are an incomplete set. In order to get all pairwise relationships, we need to eliminate time from each of the previous expressions in a pairwise fashion. We recognize that theta over its maximum is a cosine function, and that omega velocity over its maximum is a sine function, and cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. Similarly, the omega for velocity over its maximum is a sine function, and the acceleration over its maximum is a cosine function. And once again, cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. Finally, the simplest of our relationships involves position and acceleration. Both of these are cosines in the previous equations, and so the angular acceleration alpha can be written as negative the omega squared, where this is not the velocity omega, but it's the frequency one, times theta. Finally, it's worthwhile to note that both theta, the omega which is a velocity, and the alpha of this motion take maximum values, which can be picked off as the coefficients of the trigonometric functions, capital A for the position, A omega for the velocity, and A omega squared for the acceleration. As always, these formulas encode the real physics in the value of omega itself. This is what's related to the situation that we have at hand, and so we remind ourselves by the properties of a table that if we had a spring, the omega would be square root of the spring constant over the mass of the object attached to the spring. If we have a simple pendulum, which is a point mass at the end of a massless string, then the omega will be the square root of the gravitational constant g divided by the length of the string. And if we have a physical pendulum, as in the problem at hand, we will have the square root of mgd, 
where d represents the distance from the center of mass to the pivot point for the object divided by the moment of inertia spinning around the current pivot point. Returning to the problem at hand, we can answer each question that we're asked for. Question A, what is the period of the motion? We recognize that the omega, period, and frequency of any simple harmonic motion are synonymous variables. What this means is that if you know any one of those three, you know all three. The one that is central to all of our equations governing simple harmonic motion is the omega. So when we're asked the question, what is the period, we do this problem in two steps. First we find the omega, and then we convert the omega into period. Since the problem at hand is a physical pendulum, we recognize that the omega will be equal to the square root of the object's mass times the gravitational constant g times the distance d which is the distance from the center of mass of the object to the pivot point divided by the moment of inertia. In our case we know most of these constants already. The mass is given in the figure as 12 kilograms. G is 9.8 meters per second squared. D we have to be somewhat careful of. Looking at the figure closely we know that D will be the distance from the pivot point to the center of mass. The pivot point for our sign will be its upper edge where it is attached to the flagpole and if the sign is uniform which we'll assume then the center of mass is located at this dot meaning that the distance d from the pivot to the center of mass is going to be half the size of the sign and so therefore it's going to be 0 0.1 meters the other thing that we recognize is that the sign itself will act like a rod rotating about its end and so the moment of inertia will follow the formula one-third mass of the rod times its length squared and its length is 0 0.2 meters. This will yield the numerical result 8.57 rad per second. In part B of the problem we're asked to find the maximum angular acceleration if the maximum value of theta is 0 0.01 radians. We recognize that the maximum value for the acceleration is equal to the amplitude times the omega squared. The omega in this formula is of course the omega for frequency and is the answer to the previous step. Thinking for a moment about the amplitude, when we had simple harmonic motion of a mass on a spring, the amplitude was in meters because we were swinging back and forth across distance. In this problem, we are swinging back and forth across angle, and so the amplitude is the 0 0.01 radians. Meaning that we can find our angular acceleration in a simple step by placing the 0 0.01 radians in for the amplitude and multiplying by the omega squared from the previous step. This yields the result 0 0.735 radians per second squared. Finally, we're asked to find the angular velocity omega subscript v under a particular condition. To solve this question, we'll need to provide a value for omega v. However, since omega v oscillates back and forth between plus and minus of some maximum value, we're going to need to specify a particular condition. The condition here is that the theta at the time at which we wish, want to evaluate omega should be 0 0.005 radians, which we recognize from the previous part of the problem is actually half of the amplitude. To solve this well-formed expression, we need to consult the relationship between omega subscript v and theta. That relationship is as follows. Theta over its maximum value plus omega subscript v over its maximum value each squared adds up to a total of 1 which is effectively saying that cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. Plugging in the values at hand we find that 1 half squared plus the quantity omega subscript velocity over amplitude times the omega frequency quantity squared equals 1. 
We can solve this for omega velocity to yield the final result that the omega at this point is 0 0.074 radians per second.